Hey guys, welcome to Mock Question Monday. I hope everybody's holding up. Uh, this week we're talking about behavioral momentum, or more importantly, we're talking about a procedure that doesn't require the knowledge of function in order to implement. So in our question today, uh, A, B, and D, all of these uh, procedures do actually require that you know what the function of the behavior is and consider the function in the implementation of the procedure. So specifically, uh, DRA, differential reinforcement of alternative behavior. The alternative has to be functionally equivalent. Uh, Non-contingent reinforcement. A lot of people don't realize this, but for NCR, you do have to know the function of the behavior. In fact, what you are giving access to non-contingently is whatever the maintaining consequence is. So if the behavior is maintained by attention, prior to the behavior, you're going to give attention. If it's uh, maintained by escape prior to the behavior, you're going to give non-contingent access to escape. And these reinforcers, these non-contingent reinforcers, attention or access given non-contingently, what that does is creates an abative effect. Because if I am already satiated with attention or a break or escape, right, I'm not going to need to engage in a problem behavior in order to attain those maintaining consequences. So that's what NCR does. Give them lots of attention so they don't need to exhibit problem behavior for it. Give them a lot of breaks, a lot of escape so that they don't need to exhibit problem behavior in order to access those contingencies. Uh, functional communication training, you do need to know the function of a behavior because the functional communicative response has to be functionally equivalent to the problem behavior that it replaces. Um, and of course, last but not least, behavior momentum, that's the correct answer. All that behavior momentum is, guys, is a compliance building tool. So you build up momentum by giving the client low probability, um, excuse me, high probability request sequences. And those high probability requests because they're high probability, the client emits those requests, they contact reinforcement, builds up that momentum because reinforcement feels so good. And then we throw in a low probability request. And hopefully the client is so motivated by all this reinforcement that they're contacting that that low probability request is emitted. Ta-da! Reinforcement, behavior momentum. Uh, I hope that helps guys. And uh, that's it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll see you next time.